Welcome to a very special live edition of the Cross-Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, Chris Brown, and I am pleased and honored to have our guest on to the show today. Before we get to him, I'm going to say this with respects to him. Uh, I have tried to pronounce his name a few times. We did a pre-interview of how to pronounce it, and I think I've gotten it down right here, but I'm going to try, and I am pleased and honored to welcome the leadership candidate for the Green Party. Party of Canada, Simone Nakyani Messier. Pronounced it wrong, didn't I, Simone? No, no, no that was good. That okay. was good. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I appreciate your uh, your your understanding of me trying to pronounce it. I, I do appreciate that. But Simone, I, thank you so it's much for the effort. The effort is very important, Chris. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I'm looking forward to our discussion, our conversation, and getting to know you and your vision for the Green Party, but also the vision for Canada. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Well, I, I'm so let's start with the very first question that I've asked every single politician or candidate to be a politician to, who has come on this show. Simone, okay. where does yeah. your sense of duty to serve come from? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, it comes from my consciousness that uh, I exist uh, because I interact with other people. And that uh, we all live together and live in a society that we create every day. And that uh, you need to, to take action, to be out there and to share your value, to, to make sure that you're part of that community and that society. And I think it's, it's very important to do it. And that happened in the beginning of my 20s, I would say. You know, I studied such, uh, political science and some teacher really influenced me like... Uh, uh, I think about Carol Levasseur, who was a, a great teacher, who Paul André Como was a journalist and also teaching at the, at the Université Laval. And uh, they, they really influenced me and they showed me like how important it is to contribute and to, to get involved in, in, in politics. Yeah. You can get involved in many different levels of politics, whether it be municipal, school board, uh, borough in Quebec. You can get involved uh, federally. You've chosen uh, federal politics to start off the bat, and you've chosen to run for the leadership of the Green Party of Canada. So I guess the million-dollar question that's on everyone's minds right now is... What made you decide that you were the best person to lead the Green Party of Canada into the future? So, uh, and you're right, you know, you can, you know, start with all kind of uh, involvement, but I was on the school board for seven years. Uh, so I did that part. I was also a counselor in a small city uh, near my town hall, my town uh, where I was born. Uh, so for... Uh, a little bit than more than three years. Um, I was a candidate in the past also for the Green Party in 2021. I did also work a lot with the NDP under Jack Layton. I uh, was a candidate in 2008. Uh, I was a manager also during a campaign uh, in 2015. Uh, you know, I was president of, uh, of uh, an EDA. Um, I... I did a lot of thing and uh, so I was candidate in 2021. And if you had asked me at that moment, oh, are you going to run to be the next leader of the green? I want to say, seriously, you know, that I wouldn't even have thought about that. But then life is like, uh, you know, life is sometimes is uh, a real surprise and it, it just came. And sometimes I think you need to, to uh, uh, harvest the, the flower when it's it's ready so it was there i'm almost 50 next years and uh, all my experiences and my think i have the competency and i'm i'm there in my life so i said talk with my partner and then i uh, decide that it was the time an, an opportunity for me to to run and i say that will just happen once in my life so uh i think you know it's a so I said, let's go. I'm ready. So here, here I am in, uh, in that leadership race and uh, trying to bring my ideas, my policies, my point of view and uh, my experience. 
So let's talk about your journey to the Green Party of Canada, because as you've just said, you started federally in the NDP, but you came over to the Green Party. So uh, there's a lot of people right now who are politically homeless and they were once NDP, once uh, liberal, once conservative, and they're looking for a new home. What drew Mm -hmm. you to the Green Party of Canada and what made you decide that the Green Party of Canada was your political home moving forward after your time with another party? So I think climate change is very important. And right now uh, on the federal like uh, scene, uh, there's only the, the Green Party who's like uh, really ready and take those issue, that issue uh, seriously. Um, so, and I also think it's very important to have more than one uh, political party that's very strong and have a lot of seats at the House of Commons. That's why, you know, I was uh, involved with the NDP. And now I think it's it's also time to bring the green to the next level and to make it a real, you know, now we have two MPs. We have to increase the number of MPs and to have increase our voice there by having more MPs. And I think that's that's you know, it, it is time. So that's why I decided to go with the Greens. But also there's the six principles of the global Greens that I discovered and that they really talked to me. Uh, so the ecological wisdom, I think it's very important that it's a way of thinking life. It's like human being is part of all this. It's not, you know, the end in itself. And so we need to learn to balance our interaction with the planet and our consumption and, and rethink all that. So I think that first principle really talked to me and that's really what you know, brought me to, to the green. And I think at the moment, at the time also, I thought that the NDP was like moving more to the center and we saw them after they, you know, even like, uh, did a contract with the liberals, like, and then they, they, they supporting the liberals that uh, one side says, yeah, yeah, we'll give you what you want. Now they're sending a check for their family, for some, for dental care. Okay. That's good. But then whoop. And then you see that mm, they're going to go get back that money. And, and then the liberal, like, you know, like at the same time, they keep, you know, exploiting uh, fossil fuel, like new, new, uh, there's new, new project in the, in the new farmland and they just like keep going and we increase our production and our exporting of fossil fuel like since the liberal are there you know they're saying yeah yeah we're working on that but uh, if we look closely they, they're not working on that so and now i think the ndp is really like move really move to to the center and so i think the green is uh, is the right uh, the right vehicle to uh, you know to to keep going and building a, a social democrat party where we take yeah the environment the climate social justice very important also uh participative democracy in the green party that's one of the six principles uh we need to to re- bring the proportional uh, election think about that like we can't have a party that win 35 percent of the vote and then it's as a majority at the House of Commons and decide everything for everybody. It's like we need more discussion, more communication. And, you know, proportional brings that. It's like it brings it. It's put a, uh, like we saw now with a minority government. They need to discuss and find some supporting support from other party. And that's push, you know, the, the big party to to uh, to negotiate and to move to the left and, you know, bring more uh, social justice and more more balance in our way of developing uh, our economy or in our, our society. We are going to be talking about some policy later on in the interview, but I want to stick on you if you don't mind. I watched your opening video, your campaign launch video, and in okay. it, you announced you called yourself a social democrat. And now for those who are listening, and uh, I want to just put this on the record, what does it mean to be a social democrat to you? So a social democrat. So we think justice, social justice is very important. So a balance uh, in the creation of wealth. I mean, a balance in like how we, we, uh, after we, we make sure that everybody will be able you know, to have their part of wealth, to develop their knowledge, their education, and some equal chance to every citizen 
uh, Canadian citizen to grow, to develop themselves and to become what they want to become, what they are. And I think that at the that's what it means to be a social democrat. It's like to be more on the left, more uh, person person, and more acts on the uh, let's make sure that the knowledge is growing everywhere instead of thinking of oh let's make sure of our uh, GDP is growing or that like oh we have a very you know a good GDP yeah what are you creating we don't even know sometimes what's in there so it's like no let's make sure a citizen are in good health, are growing their knowledge, their education is going well, they have good values, they're good citizens. And I think that's what we, we should, you know, uh, measure to make sure that that's, that's where we're going and not just like an economy that exploiting uh, the matter the, and that's like creating all kinds of goods for consumptions, but at what hand? So what's the goal? It's just to make the richest richer and the rich richer and you know it's like so i think that's that's what it is for me do, do you think canadians Democrat. are in the same boat as you do you think canadians believe that or the majority of canadians would consider themselves a, a social democrat under that description i think uh yes i think a lot of canadians will consider themselves as social democrat i do i think like uh, canadians are like American always saying about Canadian, oh, they're the good guys. They're always polite. They're always, and it's in us. It's like, yes, we want to help each other. We want to go forward. We want to make sure everybody, you know, gets along and that everybody feel good and then is, is doing what you want to do. And that's socially acceptable. Yes. I think, I think everybody uh, would agree with that. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you answering that last question on that subject. And I want to turn to policy because that's really where I, I shine because I'm a political nerd. I went through for political science as well, and I enjoy talking policy and getting into the nitty gritty of policy. Okay. So okay. I, I'm going to, I'm going to start off. I'm going to rip the bandaid off because I'm the Alberta show. So if I don't ask the Alberta question, I guarantee yeah. you there's going to be someone in the, in the audience later on listening to this yelling at me. So, what is your views on the oil and gas industry today? By my view, I think fossil fuel, you know, we need to close the tap and we need to base our economy on something else than just oil and gas, especially tar sands. And uh, we need to diversify all that and go for bring our energy from somewhere else like hydroelectricity uh, use like the tide or the the uh, the wind and yeah that's my view regarding uh, you, you said close off the tap and i just want to clarify here yeah. most people in alberta uh who live in rural alberta are reliant on their jobs for the uh, oil and gas industry yeah. uh closing off the tap that might sound like to them you're gonna get me out of a job you're going to lose a job. Are you saying close off the taps tomorrow if elected? Or are you saying a gradual oh transition to a diversified economy? And I just need clarification on that. So, yeah, so. yeah. It, it, you always have a, a gradual transition. You can't just like, you know, like says, it's finished. We close everything. There's a transition and we need to be uh, to do it like you, the fast, humanly fast as you, that we can. Uh but I believe like Alberta knows like very strong people and very in ingenious people that won't have any difficulty to say, okay, I've been exploiting that, making money. I'm, you know, I'm ready to, you know, participate to something else and, and to, to grow another company, another enterprise. Like, and I think that that's, that's, that I don't think it's a, it will be a big problem. I think it's like, you know, it's like in life, we change all kinds of stuff. If we look, you know, like the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, everything evolved and changed. And now we have like uh, computers everywhere. And that's totally new, like a uh, uh, way of doing things. And none of that was existing like what, 40 years ago. It was just like starting here and there. And that's there's a huge en enterprise and, and business. Huh? And, and that's something that's there. And I think Alberton like going to find the, you know, maybe the next big thing or find uh, something else that, that will be as good as, as oil. And 
We what are you it, looking right? at? What are you looking at the, for replacement of that oil and gas industry or transition to, like you said, hydroelectric? Are, are there resources right now that you're looking at? You're saying this is the future of our uh, resource sector, whether it be uh, technology, whether it be tourism. What resources, what diversification are you looking at right now? Like I said, hydroelectricity is the key. Like, uh, and we saw it like, uh, it's it's like we using the strength of the nature and the, the tide, the, the wind, and we get, we need to go into those direction. Like we saw it, the, the car, the fossil fuel is creating problem. Like yeah, it's 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 a basic, you know, like understanding. You burning them, it it make uh, it monoxide the carbon. It's like and then in city at certain time of the years, you you get like uh, all that air that's pollute. So. Like electric car won't do that. Yes, there's other issue with those, but then it, it solves something that's very important in those big city that just keep growing, like and growing. That's another problem also we have to face, you know, like the urban sprawl is like uh, something like I was looking at some picture of uh, Quebec uh, in 1960 when they were building the Champlain Bridge. And Brassard was not even there. There was no city there. It was nothing. It was like, oh my, that's only like 60 years ago. There was nothing. I was like, I thought Brassard was there, you know, forever since like, I don't know, beginning of time. I wasn't, I wasn't born in 1960, but it's not that long ago. And there's nothing. It's like agriculture all along the St. Lawrence there. And now it's like, it's like city buildings and it's, it's, it's like all developed. So you know, are we going to keep growing like that? I think we need to question ourselves. Like, I love Denis Villeneuve, you know, the Quebec director, but uh, living in the in the Blade Runner, uh, I don't want my kids and my grandkids to live in a city like that. It's like, no, thank you. I think so. That's why I'm doing politics. You know, we need to think about that because that's what we're building right now. Those big city with, you know, like cements everywhere. No more forests, like, oh, yeah, we can't walk for us in the middle. Like, yeah, and then, like, I don't know. We need to rethink it, all of that, protect more forests. And it's been a long time since the last time we, we uh, protect uh, some forests, huh? New parks, like, it's been a long time. Jacques Chrétien was very active on that and others, but it's been a long time. It's like right now, we, I don't, I don't think we, we're doing uh, as much as we should do for, for, uh, for the nature, for the planet. I so think what we for us, huh? for us huh? because it's like, that's where we're living. It's like at the end, my point of view, huh? the planet will survive us if we're not intelligent enough to manage it properly. Like, you know, we'll just pass like the dinosaur and it's like, it's going to be, okay, what's next? It's, it's where we're living. And it's like, what do we want? You know, we want to live in a place that's welcoming <laughs> with the uh, harmonious and welcoming, or we want to live in a place like, you know, like it's like uh, a little bit depressing. It's like just cement and no trees and, and like uh, lights everywhere. I don't know. We need to think about that. And I think it's important. Do you think the government, the current government under Justin Trudeau is thinking about the future or is it thinking of, is it being more reactive to what's going on and not proactive of thinking about the future and being proactive on how to keep the planet alive? Uh, I think the liberal are like uh, clientelism. Clientelism in English, like a uh, party. It's like, uh, ooh, there's people there who wants that. Let's win their vote. We'll give them what they want. So by doing that, they give a little bit to everybody. So I don't think there's a vision, there's a direction. And so that's why the green are still very, very like uh, important because like the more people who are going to vote green, the more the liberals are going to move to the left and try to go to the right also. I don't know. Sometimes they try to do the grand écart. But uh, yeah, that's why we're those the, the, the party to the left are so relevant because they show you know, those, those big party with the uh, big organizations and a lot of staff and resources like that. Oh, no, there's people there. People are talking. We need to answer them. So now they will change their policy. And that's why we see even the conservatives now with the environmental, uh, you know, policy. So it's like that. That's that's great. That's uh, now they have to make sure that they will like uh, uh, do it. huh? 
they will uh, talk the walk or yeah. walk the talk. Walk, walk the talk, yeah. Yeah, I, walk the talk. We could talk about resources for the full hour, but I don't want to do that because there's other pressing issues that are facing Canadians. And I want to okay. make sure we get onto this one because this is the one that's facing a lot of Canadians and it's okay. facing Canadians from coast to coast to coast. And that is affordability affordability and inflation. People are seeing prices go up. People are struggling. People are living paycheck to paycheck right now. They are hurting. And I say that with respect to everyone because everyone is trying to make it by. I know some of my family members have been living paycheck to paycheck and it's hard times for people. What do you see as the biggest priority that needs to be done to help alleviate some of these issues around affordability, around the cost of living, around the cost of groceries right now, in your opinion? Yeah, uh, it is an issue right now. The uh, yeah, the pandemic didn't help like all the money that was pumped in the system for sure. At the time, a lot of experts are saying it was the thing to do. Uh, did they do too much? Maybe uh, it's hard to say. Huh? It was like a very like uh, uh, urgent moment, urgent situation. So they did the best uh, they could. But we saw the liberals who like, you know, try to give some fun to, to manage by their friends. Uh, that, that was like questionable. Uh, good thing there was an opposition there, you know, who saw the thing. Uh, so maybe they went too far and it'll be contribute to that inflation. So right now, and I have to add also like, uh, we saw like the gas price go up like crazy, you know, to over $2. And, and, they're, and you look at those big corp and they do billions in profit. And it's like, yeah, but maybe there's part of the inflation that's in their pocket, you know? I'm not saying the full 8%. Well, let's say the six, because every year we have like, what, two to 3% of inflation. That's what we think, you know, we want, you know, like around two to, you know, three, uh, lower than three. But so it's about, we have like about, what, four or 5% of inflation there that we don't really, you know, like understand. We do understand it's coming from like the disruptor of like the, uh, all those uh, grocery store, like, and all that, you know, like the way they they buy the food and all that. Okay, that part we understand. I think everybody understand that there was some problem with the pandemic. But on the other end, I I think there's some players who just use like the crisis moment to make money. And that's a problem. And the government need to to step, you know, put his, his feet down and to say, well, there's a problem. And we need to talk to those guys because yes, they, they are like uh, making it worse. So that's one thing. And I think uh, we need to help the people who are the, in the need the most help, you know, like the people who are going to paycheck to paycheck need programs to help them. We need to support them uh, and we need to make sure like uh, that they will go, uh, you know, that they, they will get out of that situation, be able to buy a house. That's another problem also that, you know, had to all that, all that, that, uh, uh, what happened with the housing like it's like it was totally nuts but now there's a correction we're going back to a more like a, maybe a, a normal space i think we'll see uh time will tell but it's uh yeah with the housing who made the most money the agent the real estate like they're the one who made all the money and they're still having the same like uh rate on the house and they're making a lot of money so yeah maybe the government should look there a little bit huh? and go change the rule and make sure that you know it's more fair and that uh, uh we stop like that that those uh uh can you know that those prices go up and high because they they create like a bidding for a house and that's like that's a problem we need to 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 you know government need to step there and 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 to to change the rule and make sure that it's more fair for everybody. So but isn't that our- isn't that just the market dictating our the needs and wants? And I and I say that with res- I say that just yeah. as a devil's advocate here because that's what yeah, I like yeah. to play on devil in the shows the devil advocate because I'm I, I'm I'm looking at this and I'm going okay I don't want to go in there and tell the market to not do something but at the same time you're right like people can afford houses we are lucky we bought at the time that we did because if we bought now yeah. we wouldn't have been able to afford our house. Yeah, 
but the market the market need to be regulated like you know me i never believed like i remember my teacher at the uh, you know, at university, you said, oh, the market will be managed by the invisible hand of God. I was like, what is he talking about? That one? I was like, and I was talking to my colleagues, like, did he really said that? I was like, seriously, everything we learned in that course, you know, rely on that? I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, the market was, will regulate itself. Seriously. When we got those billionaires, like, you know, it was just like are very intelligent people. And, and they just like, trying to find a way to do more money and they don't really care about like, you know, like making sure that their wealth has been, <laughs> has been like spread and, and, uh, and used to, to create a social democracy. That's not their point. Their point is to make more, more than one million. So the government needs to say, okay, I think you have enough here and maybe you're not playing the game properly. You're not helping your citizen right now. So, the government need to step, you know, forward and and say, okay, that's enough. Like we see all those condo towers, like you know, with buyers that were coming from all around the world to to buy condos and not even living there. It's like, and then the price just like in the, in BC, the price went so up. Now there's a tax. Okay, that slow down things, and now they, you know, they say, oh, I won't make as much money, so they think twice be before doing that, but. That's a problem. I think the same problems in Toronto and Montreal also is living that. So that's the job of the government to to make sure, like uh, you know, they they that doesn't happen. You know, to keep balance, to make sure affordability is there, and that our citizens are are living a life where they're happy, they feel secure, and they know that you know they they got some hope that everything will be good for weeks, months, years, and they can develop themselves, develop their spirit, develop their knowledge, and make sure their kids have good values. And then after we, we go forward as a, as a community, as a, as a country. We are coming up on the second anniversary of the Truth and Reconciliation Day on Friday, yeah. September 30th. I want to ask a poignant question. Um, has the Canadian government failed the Aboriginal and Indigenous people of Canada? And if so, what would be a priority for you to mend that relationship between the government and the First Nations and Aboriginal people of Canada? So, uh, the, the actual governments try to correct the situation, you know, um, are they doing their best? Uh, could they do better? Maybe, I think. Uh, it's it's sad, everything that happened. That happens like, you know, you know, not that long ago by previous government. And now we have to fix that. And and it's we have to do that with First Nation. Uh, we we need to rebuild the trust. We need to 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 be there and to to make sure they feel they have their the role to play, they, they, that they, they've been heard. Uh, and, and that's like, some things takes time, but also we need to make sure they all get, you know, clean water. And personally, if I was prime minister, that folder would be right on my desk. And I would do my personally a follow up on that because I don't understand after all those years that still there's some community who don't have like clean water. I'm like something, you know, it's like, doesn't add in my in my brain so i would like maybe they could explain it to us why there's so many communities who don't have clean water you know that's basic stuff and it's like that i don't understand that part so maybe they should do better yes regarding all those uh, issue and we need to work with them we need to work with first nation we need to talk we need to find solution uh, i think the you know like the uh the 30th like that day that was dedicated you know, for the reconciliation and the, the truth, I think it's a good thing. And uh, it's a step forward and it's, uh, it's, it's, we'll go to, we need to go to their rhythm and, uh, and, but some things takes times to, to, uh, to resolve also. Mm. I, 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 I thank you for that honest answer because uh, we are still seeing the uh, ramifications of finding unmarked graves across this country of our the residential school system. And every day we, we, we discover new unmarked graves 
it doesn't seem to be a big deal in the media anymore. And I want to keep talking about this issue because this is a stain on the history of Canada and we cannot wipe it away. So I thank you so much for taking time out of this interview and talking about what you believe is the important issue to help rectify that relationship. So thank you. Yeah. Um, I want to turn to the Green Party of Canada now because I'm just look, I'm looking at the time and we're a half hour in and I just want to make sure we get this part done here. I know it's okay. been a half hey. hour. I, I can't believe that. You are talking to members from across this country. You are talking to members in BC, in Alberta, all the way to Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. You are hearing different issues in each province probably. What is the message that the membership is telling you that is a priority for them? Climate change. Climate change is the priority. Climate change is uh, what we're hearing the most. People want us to work on uh, environment, climate change, and make sure that we will build an economy, a society that will respect nature and make sure that we won't, you know, uh, eat heat the the planet uh, you know, too fast because now we're just like trying to slow down all the you know the the the, the warmth of the planets like you, we're not even trying to go back to what was more normal a hundred years ago and now we're just like going in a direction that's that people are saying we need to to rethink of, of way of doing things because there's a real issue there. We saw it in PEI, huh? just like with Fiona. I like, never saw that in Canada. Like, uh, it's, it's like people lost their house. It's like, it was, it's, it's a real mess there. It's like, and we were always thinking, oh, that ha happened to Puerto Rico. No, now it's happening in Canada. Huh? And everything that happened in BC also, those fire. And it's like, like that was, that, that's a real problem. So we need to think like of ways of, of like yeah, making sure that we doing we're doing our part and being a model all around the world, you know. As Canadian, we need to be a model to show uh, other country that you know we are making things properly. And right now we are not. We are con consuming a lot. We're using fossil fuel. We're exporting a lot of fossil fuel. We're we're contributing to to what we're seeing right now with the climate change. So. I think that that's what the members want. That's what they're talking about. And they want us to focus on the, on that issue in particular. So how do you do that on a national stage? Because you have two high profile names, Justin Trudeau and Pierre Polyev, who are going to take up a lot of the oxygen in the room. How do you get climate change on the national agenda again? And how do you, because you don't have a seat if you're elected leader, you will not be sitting in the House of Commons on a day-to-day -day basis. How do you make sure that is a topic that people are talking about in the House of Commons? Uh, topic is already out there. Now we need to bring solution and we need to make the, the economy and, and the society move in the right direction. So we, the topic is everywhere. We're talking about it like in the news all the time. And so it's to make sure that those party, uh, that the old party will, will, will bring the right policy to change things and to do that. So we need to keep working you know, going to uh, to meet the citizen, building the our, our party, make our party grow, and to show that that's what that's the future, that's what people want, and to work together, and to and then they will come more to the left, and we will see them come to the left and change their way of doing things, and we will grow, get more seats, and for now we don't, you know, we have two seats. Like the goal is to get more seats and to go win some election. Bring back Pam Manley, uh, go get in that seat in Fredericton again. And it's like, that's the goal. And to go everywhere that we're able to win seat where people, you know, wants to, to, to work with us and go forward. And that's what we're going to do. So how do you do that? Because you will be the new elected leader if the members choose you. How do you see your role of growing the base of the Green Party of Canada in all 
sectors of this country, whether it be BC, Alberta, in Fredericton, like you said, in New Brunswick. How do you see your role and what do you see your role of creating a party that will be able to grow into the future? Because we are seeing media reports and I, I, I am pretty sure everyone has seen them where it says the Green Party is dead, but I don't think so. I think the Green Party still has relevance to be there. So where do you see your role as their new leader of moving the conversation forward but also growing the party in all sectors and all sections of this country yeah we need to work as a team so i played sports uh, hockey football and uh, that's what i want to bring we need to work together and in a good spirit and make sure we're we're like you know collaborative and going in the right direction and and then the growth will be there and it's like it's 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 to bring the right spirit so i i played for the university laval Rougeard at the beginning with glenn constantin and the, the same coaching staff that's there right now and that's what they brought there you know they brought some way of doing things to and and make people enjoy what they're living it's like it's it's like also every winning team it's like how What's the culture inside? How things are going, and how people are like to be to to work together and to go forward in a in a common direction. So we'll need to, you know, there will be some hard discussion because sometimes we don't agree on everything, and that's part of life. And we have to have those discussion and and to find some uh, some solution and and keep going forward. And sometimes you have to let go some things, and because you know you think that other things are better, and that's where we need to focus and. And then you go that way. But in a progressive party, everybody is very passionate. Everybody, you know, has their, their 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 way of seeing things because they're very implicated. They're not just voting once a year. They like they 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 bring all their knowledge, their passion. And so sometimes it creates a situation where it's like more more hard. The discussion is more hard. But uh, I think uh, it's also bring a lot of energy and uh, and a lot of. Uh, uh, a lot of you know like competency knowledge and when we'll thrive uh, you know be careful um <laughs> you you will if a, it when elected leader i should say you will have to balance the different voices within the green party because while you said the big issue that the membership of cross canada are talking about is climate change the issues of bc are different than the issues of nova scotia the issues that you're seeing in quebec are different than the issues in downtown ontario downtown toronto how do you see yourself balancing that aspect because while it's great to be a team we all know i've played football as well i played for the university of uh, uh queen's university sorry and i can tell you that uh, not everyone agreed on everything the coach was saying so how do you see your yourself ensuring that the green party message is similar but unique as well in the different provinces because the different messages will need to resonate with different members yeah uh i agree um we need to listen to the members and uh what the the members will decide also we'll put that forward you know if it's in line with my values and and uh, uh, I will I will defend what the me members want. And so we have like uh, our general assembly, and like we'll go forward from there. And they they will be some how could I say? But everybody agrees on climate change. Everybody knows like now. Do we all agree on the solution? That's where you know issue can come. Where we want to go in a direction, another one wants to go in another direction. But then. You have to, you know, sit down, talk, and and fight, find, you know, what uh, the majority want as a solution, and to go forward with that. And uh, I think that's how you you build things. Yeah. I, I want to ask one last question before we start our wrap up here, Simone, and that is. Okay. Um, we have covered a lot in 40 minutes. We have covered a lot of things in 40 minutes, but I guarantee you there's someone out there who's listening to this saying, why didn't you ask him this question? Well, it's my show and I get to ask the questions you want okay. to do your own show. How can people reach out to you and ask other questions? How can people get involved in your campaign? How can people donate? Because I guarantee you, you're a campaign who needs volunteers, needs donations, needs yeah, yeah. members to sign up. So how can they do that? 
So they can reach us. They go on my website, www.simonjmessier. No, J like George. And uh, .ca. And, uh, and then they can, there's an email there. They text to us. And uh, we answer them like we answer everybody every day. And uh, yeah, they can ask whatever question. They could go on the website. A lot of, the, we have a lot of policy, a lot of, you know, the way we're, I seeing life, the, we're seeing life, like uh, I'm talking about my team because we're a team, you know, we're I always, to, to, to be able, you know, to go forward, you need to work as a team. You know, you, you, you want to go, you know, on the long run, you work with a team. And uh, so we will answer everybody and please, yeah, you want to join us, you're welcome. And uh, we will find a place and, uh, and uh, use your talent and your knowledge uh, the right way. For those who are listening and watching this, the links to Simon's information, his website, his social media feeds are all in the show notes. So if you scroll down while watching this on YouTube, the links are there. And also a link to buy a membership of the Green Party of Canada is there. I'm not saying you should go buy one. I'm just saying that if you wish, after listening to our conversation, the link is down there. So please scroll down, think about it and buy a membership if you want. This brings us to the very last question of the interview, and that is this. And I, before we get this uh, last question on the record, I want to say uh, I, I've given uh, Simon before our interview the ability to say his closing statement in French and in English. So, Simon, why should you be the next leader of the Green Party of Canada whenever you're ready? Take it away. So, why should I be the next leader of the Green Party of Canada? Uh, I will start in English and then I'll say a little bit in French. Uh, so, I think uh, I'm ready to, to, to bring people together, to work together and to go forward. And I think that the Green Party principles needs to be known. And we need to keep going, growing and make sure that those principles and that way of seeing life and building our society uh, is develop and grow. And that's, I think I have what it needs to be in that position because it's a position where we will work as a team. I go back to team, but team is very important. It's not one guy in the front. It's sometimes it's one person. I will, I will have that, that, that position of leader if I win. If I don't, I will support that one that will that will win because we will work as a team as a team like and that's my spirit I want to be there not to be the leader to be in the position of leader and sometime I will lead sometimes it's another person that take the lead sometimes it's another person we work as a group but I will be in that position if they like me and I think I will be able to do the job properly um puis je veux m'assurer aussi que tous les franco ontariens Uh, Albertin, Britano-Colombien, des maritimes de partout uh, au Canada sont bien traités uh, et qui reçoivent les services auxquels ils ont droit uh, dans leur langue et qu'on continue à construire un Canada bilingue hein, d'une côte à l'autre. Et uh, ça aussi, c'est quelque chose qui m'inspire. Et travailler avec, euh, avec nos amis anglophones ensemble pour créer un, un Canada euh, où il fait bon vivre. Puis je pense que le Parti vert a son mot à dire. And uh, I think the Green Party is important, you know, to play a role there and to, to get into the House of Commons and to bring more policy and make sure that we uh, tackle climate change. You are the very first guest of my show who has spoken uh, French on this show. Uh, I, I, I guess I, I get from your passion in our pre-interview that Francophone Affairs is very uh, passionate for you, especially across this great country. Um, thank you so much. Uh, is my, my partner from BC. Okay, yeah. just saying. So we're a very like Canadian family, but uh, yeah, sometimes we have some uh, very uh, hard discussion because like my ancestor arrived in uh, in uh, in Canada in uh, 1649. So not the Italian one, but the Franco part. So yeah, we've been here for a long time, but I'm for a strong federation. And uh, are you yeah, a federalist? Sorry? Are you a federalist? For sure, I'm a federalist. 
<laughs> That's what I like to hear. Do you believe that <laughs> francophone uh, issues need to be addressed more prominently across this pro- this country? And I say that just, I know we were about to wrap up, but, well, it's my show and I get to do whatever I want on my show from time to time and I get to throw in questions at the end. But do you believe that francophone uh, issues need to be addressed more prominently in places like Alberta, BC, Saskatchewan, where they're, they are usually underrepresented? I think so. I think we we need to make sure that, you know, that they receive the service they're allowed to and that they've been respected and they're to they keep like growing like the rest of the society they're living in. And uh, not that like uh, one year, like the budget are been cut and then look, uh, we're closing a school. And I think like we need to keep all that alive. It's it's a rich richness. It's for Canada. And uh I, I believe in the bilingual Canada. I think it's uh, it's important, and I think that's that's the key also to uh, to to you know to keep going forward as a, as a nation. Well, I want to thank you so much for sitting down, taking time out of your campaign, and doing this interview today, Simon. Uh, I appreciate everything you're doing, and I, I wish you the best of luck. Um, thank you. Thank you, Chris. So with that, I want to remind everyone, put down your social media feed for at least five minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our society, helps our democracy, and it helps uh, us as a people at the end of the day. So with that, have yourself an excellent day and keep talking, everyone.